Find out exactly what font was used in your favorite word art so that you can use that font to make matching elements. This is video two of a two-part set showing my fail-proof way to use the What Font Is website. If you missed part one of this set, I recommend going back and watching that video before continuing. Step one of this video is to get the right website. And we're going to start with a private browsing window. Private browsers will often block extra pop-ups on a website because data is not being collected while browsing. If you need help opening a private browsing window in your browser, you'll find links to the most common browsers in the manual. Then after you have your private browsing window open, go to whatfontis.com. The first thing you'll notice about this free website is that it has ads. Make sure not to get distracted. Don't click on them. Also, depending on how fast or slow you are at this process, you are going to be asked to create an account. A box is going to pop up and they are going to try their hardest to convince you that you need to create an account, whether it's free or paid. But I recommend not setting up an account at all. It simply isn't necessary and you can use this website without an account. Step two is to upload the JPEG file that you saved from the last video to the What Font Is website. The success of this website is often directly related to the type of image that you use. So if you struggle with this section of the tutorial, Consider going back and reworking the image that you saved in the last video or simply use a different image. To upload your image to the What Font Is website, click on the Browse button and then navigate to the JPEG image that you saved to your desktop and then click Open. And again, if you come across any sign in or register pop-up boxes, simply click the X to close them. Step three is to add letters to the character boxes. Here is where you tell the software which pixels of your image coordinate with which letters of the alphabet. If you've chosen an image with well-defined letters, this part will work perfect for you. Under each image, simply put the character that coordinates with it. Something to keep in mind is that you can only input one letter. So if you're given an image with more than one letter displaying, simply skip the input box. And then when you're finished, click continue. Step four is to find a matching or similar font. At the top of the next screen, you're given the choice to view all the matching or similar fonts, only commercial use fonts, or only free personal use fonts. The default is set to all fonts. This is the choice that I'll use because it gives the most results. Next, scroll down until you find a font that matches the font in your image or one that is similar. I have 60 possible matches. The perfect match is number 54, Catalina and a Kappa Sans Bold. It says that this font costs $10 from myfonts.com. If you're not willing to pay for the matching font, Choose one from the list that looks similar and is free. Or return to the top and click on Free Personal to narrow your search. Step five is to actually search for the font that matches. Here you have some choices. Choice one would be to click on the font name and download and possibly purchase the font from what font is. Your second choice would be to click on the download icon. Doing this will take you to a website where you can download and possibly purchase the font from the website that's listed on the right. And choice number three would be to copy the name of the font and then paste it in the search bar on google.com. The same font will be available on many different websites and you may find that the specific font that you're looking for may cost money on one website but could be free on another. So now that I know some of the fonts that Cindy used in her Just Peachy scrapbooking kit, 
I can create additional word art using the same fonts so that they coordinate on my scrapbook page or greeting card. So that's how to use the What Font Is website to find matching fonts for your next digital project. This is Jen White with Digital Scrapper.